part 20. I go back to teaching. The good times couldn't last forever. Even though getting paid to stay home was absolutely amazing, and now I will always look toward that glorious future when something is done about the billionaires holding us hostage to slave wages, the COVID-19 summer finally faded away to the COVID fall. The federally enhanced unemployment payments were still good for a few weeks into the school year, so I broke my heart canceling my remaining claim. I could get caught and in trouble if I continued drawing payments while teaching high school. There was also a lot of talk on the news about extending federally enhanced unemployment, but I figured whether payments were ripped away now or following a brief extension, there was no way for me to avoid going back to work forever. Funny how once upon a time I desperately wanted to become a full-time charter school teacher, and now getting paid to stay home was the best job of my life. Apologies to Esperanza Siempre. After a whole summer of staying home, I was very shy venturing into the world again. Going to my charter school's corporate office was stressful. Going through the motions with HR regarding new employee onboarding seemed senseless. And watching the sexual harassment videos with headphones in the middle of a busy office seemed superfluous. Couldn't the HR lady have sent me the forms electronically? Couldn't I have downloaded sexual harassment videos? My charter school company seemed to be operating as normal, but with employees wearing masks. And the wearing masks practice would diminish quickly, no matter what was going on with community spread. So after my whole summer of living reclusively, and Arizona gaining no ground whatsoever in the fight against COVID, I was back in a professional setting like nothing happened. My eyes opened wide when the HR lady asked what my experience was like counseling juvenile probationers during the pandemic all summer. I forgot that four months ago I told her not to call Esperanza Siempre for a reference because I wasn't quitting until the school year. Wow, working that long would have been a huge waste of federally enhanced unemployment. The charter school company, a for-profit organization, was called Cactus Academies. That corporate umbrella operated five charter high schools called Coyote Academy, Peccary Academy, Jackrabbit Academy, Tortoise Academy, and Hummingbird Academy. I was hired to teach at Hummingbird Academy, but first I needed to report to Coyote Academy for new employee orientation. A mere week before school started, I assembled with everybody else hired by Cactus Academies for a thorough indoctrination. Coyote Academy was set up like its four sister schools with a large central computer lab where students worked most of the day, flanked by a couple classrooms that teachers shared for small group instruction, and the principal's office and front desk services up front. I was immediately embarrassed to learn I committed to teaching in what was essentially a single-room schoolhouse. For-profit education in Arizona just flings students who otherwise wouldn't graduate high school across the finish line. Hence the large computer lab where all the students keep clicking through five grueling hours a day. The small group classrooms were there so once every day we, the financially compensated adults, could pick a handful of students who were tired of clicking their mice and pretend we were teachers for about an hour each. The gist of our job was to maintain floor management and write bathroom passes. New employee orientation at Coyote Academy was fucking weird. When we introduced ourselves and answered the icebreaker questions, I hate two truths and a lie so much, we learned that Hummingbird Academy had three new English teachers starting at the same time. I spent all summer thinking I was an important content teacher, only to learn I was one of several warm bodies sent to wander a warehouse of computers, a digital sweatshop, asking students if they needed help with any English-related assignment or just another bathroom pass. If there were no specific students to help, I was to always scold everyone for loafing on their smartphones. We could not confiscate phones, but put phones in envelopes near the offenders. The other two English teachers were very young, fresh out of college, and ridiculously smart. While we sat in the computer lab, 
with every other seat marked unavailable by a please social distance sign taped to its corresponding monitor, I got to practice some of those mouse clicks my soon-to-be students would be making to advance towards their freebie high school diploma. I learned a student could graduate quickly by right-clicking every multiple choice question and using the browser's built-in web search to instantly find every answer. By now, Past students had already crowdsourced questions to the entire online curriculum used by Cactus Academies, and there were multiple websites boasting complete answer keys. The whole concept on display for me today encouraged cheating, and I was able to pass 20% of freshman English just dicking around for an hour at orientation. And even though my role humiliated me, I concluded this fake teaching bullshit was probably going to be the easiest job. If I could tough it out three years, I could cash out the sentence for a real teaching certificate. The Cactus Academy's talking heads cheering on this big box version of education finally got around to sharing their plan for COVID. The school year was going to start with only teachers, but no students. For the first time in the history of the five schools, students were allowed to work from home. The curriculum had always been an online curriculum, but making students work in supervised computer labs ensured they kept clicking five hours a day. Even though the diploma at the end is a freebie, students sure hated clicking five hours a day. Eventually, when community spread lowered to the first county determined benchmark, the special education students and English second language students would be allowed back in the building. Then, when community spread lowered to the next county determined benchmark, an initial wave of mainstream students would be allowed back in the building up to one-third capacity. After that, there would be two more county determined benchmarks until we were allowed to fully open. As much as I wanted COVID to resolve for the good of mankind, I wasn't in a rush to see students fill up these schools. Sitting around offering remote assistance to students who were better off searching the internet sounded like the next best thing to staying home. Just as I was finishing new employee orientation at Coyote Academy and warming up to the idea of my easy job, I got a group text from some of the already established teachers inside Hummingbird Academy. The first unknown coworker texted me, Welcome to the Hummingbird Academy where we aren't afraid of COVID. Let's have a great year not living in fear. I was not yet familiar with the QAnon cult but a bunch of its looniest members worked at my new school.